Paul Massetta. Welcome to episode number 17 of 30 Days of Persuasion Plays. Today's episode is about the fact that the human mind loves novelty. The human mind loves novelty. There's actually a scientific explanation for this. So, psychologists... They have a name for us human beings. They call us cognitive misers. And really what that means is that the human mind is designed in a way to preserve cognitive resources. So that's just a fancy way of saying it doesn't like to work hard. It likes to reserve all of its energy and resources for important things. And so in the process of that, we use a lot of mental shortcuts called heuristics to make decisions about certain things. And the reason for that is because the mind does not like to use its cognitive resources. It likes to save those things. So the reality is that most of us are functioning on autopilot most of the time. So what happens is you go through life, you have a series of experiences. And so what happens is your mind starts to make these almost like filing drawers in your mind and it will take experiences and it will file them immediately into one drawer or another so that it doesn't have to utilize its resources. So here's an example. First time you try to ride a bike, right? You fall all over the place, you need training wheels, you take the training wheels off, you lose your balance, you crash and you're falling all over the place. But then what happens is you learn how to ride that bike, right? And then what happens after that? You never have to learn how to ride that bike again because what happened is your mind took that experience, placed it in the file cabinet or the file drawer of how to ride a bike, know how to do that, know how to use balance, uh, know how to hold the, the handlebars the right way, blah, 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 right? All that happens automatically. So you don't, when you get on the bike, you don't consciously have to think about how to do it. And this happens with all of the experiences in our lives. As we do them more, the mind uses less and less of its resources and it's instead focuses on autopilot until it's introduced to something new. So all of this, all of this shortcut taking, this use of heuristics is based on familiarity. So when the mind is used to something or it's seen something before, it feels like it doesn't have to really focus on it. But when you introduce something new to the mind, something that it's never done before, like riding jet skis, for example, that's different than riding a bike. Now, the mind has to utilize conscious awareness. It has to wake up. So it stops functioning on autopilot. So how do you use this to your advantage? Well, one of the very first rules of persuasion is you need to gain attention or get attention. If you don't have your audience's attention, they're not listening to you, they're not paying attention to you, there's absolutely no way you could ever persuade them to buy anything. It's like if you have a physical store, right? They say location is everything. You could have the greatest store in the world selling, or you could have the, it could be a restaurant. You could have the greatest pizza in the world. But if nobody knows where the restaurant is, you're not going to sell any of that pizza, right? Because no one can find it. Well, the same thing is true when you communicate with people and try to persuade them. If they're not finding you or finding your message by first listening to what you have to say, then your persuasive message means nothing. So how do you gain their attention? One of the easiest ways to gain their attention is to utilize novelty, is to present something different to them, present something that they've never heard before. Now, you might be thinking, well, I mean, what I teach people or what I talk about is a common thing. You know, maybe you talk about motivation. Maybe you talk about weight loss. Maybe you talk about influence and persuasion, sales techniques, right? So you say to yourself, well, that's not something new. So how do I detract that person from autopilot and get their attention? There are three different ways to do it. The first one is to present a different story. So I've talked about this time and time again, storytelling in my opinion, is the most powerful form of indirect persuasive communication. So what I mean by indirect is when you are influencing or persuading somebody without them realizing that you're doing it. So 
Storytelling is the most effective way to do that because the human mind is hardwired for stories. We've been hearing stories since the dawn of time. We're used to stories. Stories make sense to us. They're entertaining to us. It's the reason why the Hollywood industry generates billions of dollars each year. Because what happens is when you watch a movie, you can't help but start to identify with the protagonist or the main character in the movie. You start to sympathize with them, empathize with them. You start to take on their feelings, emotions, right? If they experience a loss or a sadness, you get choked up and you start to cry. Like you begin to identify with that person. Well, that's storytelling. So when you can take storytelling and you can take your persuasive message and wrap it up in a story, it doesn't come off so much like a sales pitch or a presentation. It comes off more like a natural thing like a conversational piece right and this dates back to primitive times because we've been hearing stories since the dawn of time when a person suddenly figured out a way to catch a fish better or hunt an animal better how did he tell his tribe about that he came back and told them a story about how he did it it's one of the first learning methods that we created right teaching people we teach them by telling stories right and stories are very powerful so all you simply have to do is tell a different type of story than everyone else is telling about your topic. That's how you use novelty in the first case. The second, case, the second way that you can do it is you can present a different educational piece. So if your product, service, or offer is designed to equip somebody with a skill set that they didn't have going into it, talk about how your product or service does that differently better than everyone else's, right? Because the first step is getting their attention and getting that mind to turn off that autopilot button and suddenly become focused. So talk about a different type of educational piece. Talk about a way that your product or service is gonna help them that's different then the way everybody else's product or service is going to help them. And then talk about a different method, which again coincides to number two. Talk about the unique mechanism of your product, which is the unique part, process, element, contraption, whatever you want to call it, that makes your product or service different than everyone else's. So again, present a different story present a different educational piece, which is how the product helps them differently than everyone else, and then present a different method, which is why the product helps them. What is different about the product or services formula that ultimately is different than everyone else's, which is gonna cause them to get the results that they are looking for. So remember, utilize novelty when you present to people. If you enjoyed this video, like it, leave a comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel.